committee will come back to order after the recess. Is an election pending when facts are in dispute, and you may have mentioned this, this is one in which the facts are not unanimous. There's not universal, there's not even bipartisan agreement on the facts and what, they're, uh, what they lead to, especially when there's exculpatory evidence that has been presented, not in the Schiff report, but in other reports. Does that timing bother you from a historical perspective, not only in the past, but moving forward as well? Yeah, fast and narrow is not a good recipe for impeachment. That's the case with Johnson. Narrow was the case with Clinton. They tend not to survive. They tend to collapse in front of the Senate. Impeachments are like buildings. There's a ratio between your foundation and your height. And this is the highest structure you can build under the Constitution. You want to build an impeachment? You have to have a foundation broad enough to support it. This is the narrowest impeachment in history. If you prove a quid pro quo, that you, you might have an impeachable offense. But to go up only on a non-criminal case would be the first time in history. So why is that the case? The reason is that crimes have an established definition and case law. So there's a concrete, independent body of law that assures the public that this is not just political, that this is a president who did something they could not do. You can't say the president is above the law if you then say the crimes you accuse him of really don't have to be established. And what you do with it is the very definition of legitimacy. Let's continue on. And that, I think, is the most distressing thing for most of us today, is there's so much more rage than reason. You can't even talk about these issues without people saying, you must be in favor of the Ukrainians taking over the country, or the Russians moving into the White House. At some point, as a people, we have to have a serious discussion about the grounds to remove a duly elected president. Is an impeachment a development that would be disastrous for the nation as a whole? Professor Tur Turley, is that advice being followed by House Democrats in this case? Not on this schedule. The one thing, if you look at, I, I laid out the three impeachments, the one thing that comes out of those impeachments in terms of what bipartisan support occurred is that impeachments require a certain period of saturation and maturation. That is, the public has to catch up. I'm not prejudging what your record would show, but if you rush this impeachment, you're gonna leave half the country behind. And certainly that's not what the president, what the framers wanted. You have to give the time to build a record. This isn't an impulse buy item. You're trying to remove a duly elected president of the United States. And that takes time, it takes work. Uh, Professor Turley, the Nixon and Clinton impeachments were debated solidly in the high crimes category, correct? Crimes yes. were at issue. Uh, but on the evidence presented so far, is it your view that there is no credible evidence that any crime was committed by President Trump? Yes, I've gone through all of the crimes mentioned. They do not meet any reasonable interpretation of those crimes, and I'm relying on express statements from the federal courts. I understand that the language in the statutes are often broad. That's not the controlling language. It's the language of the interpretation of federal courts. And I think that all of those decisions stand mightily in the way of these theories. And if you can't make out those crimes, then don't call it that crime. If it doesn't matter, then what's the point? Call it treason. Call it endangered species violations, if none of this matters. But there are no words in the four corners of the transcript of President Trump's call that show a request for false information, are there? No, and that's, the, that's one of the reasons why, if you want to establish the opposing view, you have to investigate this further. Professor Turley, would you agree that the evidence compiled to date by House Democrats during these current impeachment proceedings fails to meet the standard of clear and convincing evidence? I do, by a considerable measure. Professor Turley, do you think that impeaching in this case would constitute impeaching with a partial or plausibly contested understanding of key facts? I think that that's clear, because the, the, this is one of the thinnest records ever to go forward on impeachment. I mean, the Johnson record, once again, we can debate, because this, that was the fourth attempt at, at an impeachment. But this is certainly the thinnest of a modern record. If you take a look at the size of the record of Clinton and Nixon, they were massive in comparison to this, which was, is almost wafer thin in comparison. And it has left doubts, not just in doubts in the minds of people supporting President Trump, doubts in the minds of people like myself. 
about what actually occurred. We often think that our times are unique. You know, this provision wasn't just written for times like There's a difference between requesting investigations and a quid pro quo. You need to stick the landing on the quid pro quo. You need to get the evidence to support it. It might be out there, I don't know, but it's not in this record. I agree with my colleagues, we've all read the record, and I just come to a different conclusion. I don't see proof of a quid pro quo, no matter what my presumptions, assumptions, or bias might be. In terms of Hastings, but even in England, it was a robust adversarial process.